Greetings, lovers of lore. It's your host, Vicious Venus, and welcome back to the newest installment of the Whimsical Whispers podcast. Pride Month is finally here, so how could we not do a Pride Month special? Instead of talking about one story or one specific writer, I want to talk about a problem that often happens in the writing community when people attempt to write LGBTQIA plus characters. Oftentimes, writers try to represent the community with good intentions. However, the character just comes out wrong, and instead of representing the community, the author ends up insulting it. This is a serious problem for writers who aren't in the community or haven't interacted with people in the community. This is because there is no way you can represent a group of people without understanding them first. Now, as a member of the community myself, proper representation is really important to me and so, so many others. Now, I'm not going to dive into the whole topic of misrepresentation or how the media basically just bullies the community because that is a huge thing that I don't really want to get into this episode. Rather, I will be focusing on the do's and don'ts of writing an LGBTQIA plus character. I'm going to try my best to keep this as lighthearted as possible because Pride Month is a happy time where you love yourself for being yourself and you spread this love to others. Now let's start with the don'ts of writing an LGBTQIA plus character. There are initially two ways you can go really wrong with an LGBTQIA plus character. I mean, there's more than one way to incorrectly write uh, an LGBTQIA plus character, but these are like the two biggest mistakes you can really make. These are like the worst mistakes people make when writing these types of characters. The first way is by suppressing their sexuality and or gender identity to the point that it's non-existent. Have you ever watched Scooby-Doo? If you have, then you are probably familiar with the character Velma. Did you know that Velma was written as a lesbian in the early drafts? Probably not. The screenwriter of the 2002 Scooby-Doo film, James Gunner, claimed that Velma was intended to be a lesbian. Obviously because of the media at the time, Velma's sexuality was covered up and ignored to the point where it was practically non-existent. If you watch any of the shows or the movies without the knowledge of her being a lesbian, you probably would assume that she's straight or just anything else but a lesbian. And sometimes this happens to LGBTQIA plus characters when the author never clarifies or makes canon that the character is indeed a part of the community. This, re- this often happens when the author just never specifies, never just straight up says it. This is honestly a pretty dumb mistake because people won't feel represented if they don't know that they're being represented. You cannot be mad about people claiming that there isn't representation when you never like stated that there was representation, when you never showed any representation. You can't be mad if they get mad about that. In Velma's case, it really wasn't the writer's fault, rather it was the media that was responsible. However, some writers out there genuinely make this mistake and it's really not that hard to correct. Obviously, it's understandable when the publishing company or whoever is in charge of making your story widely known is homophobic and or transphobic. In that case, it would be difficult to showcase an LGBTQIA character because, like, it's just kind of hard to give out an LGBTQIA plus character when you're working for people who don't want to showcase those types of characters. If you're stuck in a situation like that, then it's 100% understandable when you have to suppress their sexuality and their gender identity to the point where people don't even know. However, however, if you have the creative liberty to represent the community and you mess it up like this that's that's on you like you don't have any excuses you had 
all the options, there was nothing holding you back, and yet you just didn't do it. That's gonna be your fault, that you have no excuses, and that's that. So all I can say is that when you're writing an LGBTQIA plus character, please do make it known, please make it canon, so that way people do actually feel represented. Because if you don't do this, then people aren't going to know, people aren't going to feel represented or loved, they aren't going to feel heard, so it's important that you do specify. Another huge don't in making an LGBTQIA plus character, and keep in mind this is a huge don't and I hate it when people do this, is when you make their entire character I mean their entire personality, their character in general, all about their sexuality and or their gender identity. Now, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. This is just straight up annoying and terrible in so many ways. First of all, doing this just makes the character feel absolutely useless and unessential to the plot. Imagine watching a TV show with a lesbian character, but whenever she shows up, she just makes gay jokes, flirts with random women, has no character development, and overall does nothing in the show. You would feel as if she was unimportant and as if she could be killed off, and the plot wouldn't change. And honestly, whenever I read stories with characters like this or watch TV shows with characters like this, I pray that the author kills them off because they're so annoying to watch. Now, there are so many people in the community who like making queer or trans jokes. I make queer and trans jokes myself, but queer and trans jokes aren't my entire sense of humor. They aren't my entire personality. I make other jokes, I do other things, my entire self, like my entire personality, me as a person, does not revolve around who I like or who I identify as. Writing a character like this just makes them, just makes it feel like you only put them in there just for representation that isn't even representation. And another huge reason why writing an LGBTQIA plus character like this is super annoying is because you end up stereotyping the character in one of the worst ways possible. Whenever I watch a movie and a random gay man appears, I honestly feel so uncomfortable because they usually portray this gay man as super feminine, hypersexual, and like really, really weird. I myself am not a gay man, but just watching a gay man being represented like this, it makes me so uncomfortable I physically cannot watch, because I feel like if I do, I might cry. This is what happens when you just completely stereotype an LGBTQIA plus character to the point where that's everything about them. Like, you just make the viewers feel uncomfortable. You make the community who you're trying to represent feel uncomfortable. You make everyone in the room feel uncomfortable. Except for the homophobes and transphobes. For some reason, they get a kick out of it. It's not really that funny, but, you know, they have a weird sense of humor. Just stereotyping characters like this just hurts the community so much and is honestly really, really unrealistic. I mean, people have so many things to their character, to their personality. Like, for example, I am an artist and I am a storyteller, but that's not everything about me. I'm also lazy. I also like food. I'm also a little mean sometimes. I also like writing the script for this podcast. I also like running this podcast with my friend. I like so many things. My entire personality, my entire character does not revolve around the fact that I am an artist and a storyteller. There are so many things about me that makes me, you know, me. And just writing a character that whose central focal point is on their sexuality and or their gender identity, not only is that terrible writing, but it's just really rude, unnecessary, and uncomfortable to watch. I really hope that people understand why this is so bad. Because it really is 
so bad. So now that I've covered the don'ts of writing an LGBTQIA plus character, how should you write an LGBTQIA plus character? How I would go about it is by treating their sexual sexual bleh, sorry I cannot speak their sexuality and or their gender identity as an accessory on an outfit. Accessories such as hats, scarves, jewelry, watches, and etc are often added to an outfit to accentuate the outfit, to give your outfit more character, more pizzazz, more fashionableness to it. <laughs> now, when you are creating an outfit for yourself, accessories are really important in making your outfit look more in making your outfit have more character and have more depth in it. Otherwise, your outfit just might look boring. However, the thing with accessories is that they aren't the main part of your outfit. They are little embellishments that make your outfit 10,000 times better, but they aren't the main focus. Your accessories can add character, they can add a story behind your outfit, they can give importance to what you wear. However, they aren't treated as the main part of the outfit, they aren't treated as the biggest part of your outfit. And this is kind of how I feel like people should write sexuality and gender identity. Make it an important part of their character, but not their entire character. It's not that hard to do. Sexuality and gender gender identity can influence people in so many ways, because sadly we live in a world that can be very controlled by who we like and who we identify as. So it's really important to make it so that sexuality and gender identity is important to the character, but not so much that it is literally all they are. So here's an example of how you should write an LGBTQIA plus character. Let's say I'm writing about a character named Linda. Linda is a freelance animator who has dreams of starting her own animation channel. However, Linda is a trans woman and she wants to get bottom and top surgery, but does not have the money to get those surgeries, and so she is saving up. She does not believe that her animation channel will be financially stable, will not provide her the money she needs, and so she continues to be a freelance animator. Linda also enjoys drinking black coffee in the morning, taking long, and I mean long, walks in the woods, and going through art art galleries online and in person whenever she has art block. Now, in this example, I told you that Linda was a trans woman who wants to have bottom and top surgery. However, I do not go on and on and on about her transition or about her being a trans woman. I just listed some two key details that are important to her character. The fact that she wants bottom and top surgery makes it really important that makes her financial situation very important. The fact that she wants something expensive such as these surgeries makes it even more crucial, makes her like more, how should I put this, more self-conscious about starting a channel. Because she wants these surgeries and cannot afford to do so, it stops her from going after her dreams. However, like I said, I did not ramble on and on and on about her being a trans woman. I also added some other characteristics and some other hobbies she has. I told you that she likes drinking black coffee in the morning. I told you that she likes taking long walks in the woods. I told you that she likes visiting art galleries whenever she has art block. I did not ramble on and on about her being a trans woman. It is an important part to her character because of her financial situation, but that is not her entire character. Linda isn't just a trans woman. Linda is all of these different things. And all of these different things makes Linda who she is. Now, I just want to remind everyone that these do's and don'ts honestly apply to all sorts of communities all sorts of minorities, all sorts of people who deserve to be represented. 
And if we really want to properly represent people, we need to do it in a way that they are being shown in a positive and non-stereotypical way. There is no point in representing people, letting them be seen on television, if you aren't going to represent them properly, if you aren't going to show them in a light in which they are a real person and not some weird stereotypical weirdo. And also, keep in mind that you don't need to do this only for Pride Month. You don't need to write an LGBTQIA plus character for the sake of Pride Month. I encourage everyone to write more diverse characters year round. Like, yes, Pride Month is especially important for so many people in the community, but I think we'd all feel so much better if we were treated with the same importance all year round. And it it would make so many people feel so much better. And to be honest, it's not like writing a diverse character is going to kill you. You can totally write more characters with a different sexuality other than straight. You can write trans characters. It's not going to hurt you or your story or the plot in any way whatsoever. Just make sure that you follow these do's and don'ts, take advice from people who are actually in the community, and just, above all, be respectful, listen, and listen to others who are a part of the community that you're trying to represent, because that is the most important. If people in that community find your character or the way you represented them offensive, then you should most definitely listen to them. It is important that you do, because that is honestly the whole reason why representation is important. And there are people out there who really, really need to see themselves being represented, and it's important that we do this now. Why wait creating a diverse character cast when you can just do it right now? Why wait creating a story with a trans character when you can do it right now? Anyway, that is all I have for this week's episode, and I thank you so much for listening to the end. Depending on the platform you are on, please comment down below so that we can engage in a Lovers of Lore discussion. Anyway, I hope everyone has a happy, spectacular, colorful Pride Month, and we will see you all in the next episode. Goodbye.